Welcome to Perceptions Today podcast where we discuss consciousness in all forms. March 2022, episode 17, Keith Robinson joins us to discuss his film Internal Light featuring Anthony Peake. Keith Robinson is a filmmaker under the name of KR Central. But you'll hit it. We get into trouble. We otherwise. do, and it's one of those pronunciations you just say it differently because people know when you say demon, everyone knows you mean the Greek word for demon. But they are very, very distinct. Very distinct words. Yeah, because when you, when you look up d a d a e m o n, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it shows you pictures of um, the devil and things like that. But I just want to see how you pronounce it in Greek. It's, it's pronounced demon. There's um, a Greek word which I should know about for you, Damon, which I should probably better translate because that was part of my degree as well. Um, but they're very, very distinct. Demons now become a, an anglicised version of the, the devil. And a lot of that's got to do with the sort of the biblical um, taking over the word and bringing it in and just making out the devil is just this red horn, uh, red skinned horn. It's, they're not the same thing. It's, it's become almost a little bit pop culture is that the, the yeah, devil is like that. It's a bit like the... Um... This is an instance of the conversation coming up in the roundtable discussion. Participants knew it was being recorded. Writing to him, they're actually telling him that he's actually writing how they feel into books and he's the kind of first person being able to explain it to other people in a broader sense. If you can't communicate such an intense emotional state with imagery and sensation, finding someone who can even give like 10% of it is fantastic it means you're not alone and you've actually got more other people being connected with you and you're finding community in a manner and you don't find it feel it's a stigma and again they also keep saying that they always feel that somebody else in their mind doing it and at 11 31 he starts talking about french writers and this french writer's name's good it's amelia zon gone core yeah amelia zeta Goncourt. And he said, as a quote, life is nothing between two epileptic seizures. That is really replying to or saying to people that what you experience within that actual seizure is what real life is. And the other sides of it are not real life because it's so intense with colors, information and feelings. It's equivalent to how people start talking about when they're doing either dimethyltryptamine, ayahuasca, or other psychedelics in the right kind of setting. And I think a few of you who've done those kind of research would actually kind of feel connected to knowing what they mean by that without having to do that. Because body chemistry... Even when people are talking about NDEs, they, they say things like that as well. Yes. Ah, sorry. I looked away and didn't realise that you put yourself <laughs> on mute again afterwards. <laughs> I was just checking something out. Somebody sent me a message and I thought, oh, I better see if it was a question about what we were just discussing. And <laughs> I felt like you dodged out from my shoulder and then went back again. No, that's all I all had right. to say. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, lo and behold, we've got a man called the Humanity Hoax, who I've seen before. Uh, da, 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 da. He's asking questions if we want to go and talk about this at some point, which would be quite good. Humanity Hoax is Jeremy. Now... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, oh, I just yeah. thought it'd be funny to oh, just okay. be a new person. Sorry. Now, Edgeways and the Humanity Hoax, if you're quite happy with a kind of non-professional approach to things, we're quite good at that. We kind of put things together on the fly, as you see. Jamie's already <laughs> oh, experienced that anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he lost two hours. Yeah, that's what happens. Oh, by the way, everyone, if you ever go and read my banner on Twitter, you'll see it says, prepare for missing time. And if I ever ask you, do you have five minutes? Run, because you could lose a lot of time when I talk to you. Not intentionally. We just run into other kind of conversations. And there's a lot of people in this room who have experienced this. Be warned. Anyway, going back on topic. Hang on. I just want to check. Keith, still in there? I know Keith's got to run from laptop to phone, plug the right thing on, take the microphone off, then talk to me. Avogades. Hello. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah, you're quite right. Yeah, microphone off, password in. <laughs> I'm still here. Now, are you enjoying your first experience in here? I am, yes. I am locked in, locked on and listening loud and clear, so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're just so professional. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm actually uh, enjoying just it. Just imagine. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying you here. Um, I'm enjoying hearing you um, dissect it, really. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It's, 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 it's kind of like listening to um, an additional, you know, in addition to the video that I created hearing how, you know, you've looked into it so deep and, you know, the other bits of research that Anthony Peake um, put in there. So, yeah, I'm finding it very interesting. Excellent. It's fair to hear for a first time. 
again, we're trying to make this as a jumping off point for people. So I know quite a few of you actually come over for the past seven times into here or even six that I've seen. And I'm trying to treat it that you've never been here before. We're trying to give you the ideas straight and simple, and then you can dive off and find other pieces of information. And that's how I would like to have things presented. So hopefully it's all working out well. Yep, it's all good this end. And yep. Staying tuned in, so I'm not going anywhere. Um, anywhere so. That's good. Right, so I'm going to launch on to the next bit of what Anthony Peake wanted to figure out. M and obviously Melissa, if you keep an eyeball on anybody putting up requests for their hands, etc., it would be useful because my eyeballs are running between phone, laptop, etc. Yeah. You wanted to say something, Melissa? No, I was just saying yes to what you were saying. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye. Don't worry. Excellent. Good. Just because I haven't let you talk for this period of time doesn't mean I won't let you talk. No, I'm quite right. happy okay. listening. Trust me. I know. Another 20 pages and we'd be done. Don't worry about it, kids. Right. Anyway, so at 12 minutes, 27 seconds, he's asking, so what's this telling us about the brain structures? When you look into the brain, it's full of neurons, billions of cells, as people will know. And when you look at how brain cells are connected with information. There's a wonderful graphic that Keith has put in there, as in Keith Robinson, for those listening later on and not live, showing the synaptic gap between the actual neurons. And what happens between those areas is that a signal will be passed along the nerve endings to produce a chemical, which will then jump across the actual gap to give the next chemical release elsewhere. Now, Certain times during our life, there's a neurochemical known to be released at the times of stress and death, and it's called glutamate. Now, some of the times you will actually find that medications for epilepsy people will actually have things like gabapentin, which is a company name for this, and it will actually regulate that area because it will also regulate pain management as well and also stop seizures and also shingles. Um, Renegade wants to say something. Okay. Um, I was wondering, uh, do you know anything about Anthony Peake and the uh, relationship to the Akashic Records? Yes, because he talks about writing a book with Ervin Laszlo and The Immortal Mind, which is a fantastic book which references the Akashic Record, and we will be talking about the Akashic Record a bit further down within the notes that we've got, which is great that you picked that up, because have you actually seen the video, Renegade, that we're talking about that Keith Robinson put together? I haven't seen it, but all these talks yeah, reminds me of these uh, Akashic Records, so... I was wondering if there was a, some kind of a connection. You're right on target. Yeah, right on target, which is good. Okay. Tamara wants to speak which is superb. as well. Tamara and then okay. Oni. Okay, so I guess this will be continued another time. Oh, sorry, Renegade. Oh, no, it's continued no. this okay. evening, Renegade. Okay. Renegade, we're going to be talking about the Akashic Record a bit further down in the actual bit. But because we got two hands mm-hmm. up already, we'll get that question, unless your question is continuing. So, no, Renegade, my question I is answered speaking. for now, but okay, I'm fine. Now, centred. <laughs> At the same time as Renegade spoke, I was kind of overlaid. No, I was just I, saying sorry to him because I, I thought he had finished speaking. That's all. My apologies, Renegade. It's okay. It's, it's just cool. with icons, you can't see what goes on. It's terrible. Shrugging your shoulders, nodding your heads. I can't see any of this. Tamara? Uh, yes, when you say glutamate, um, what effect does monosodium glutamate have on the brain? Are they not connected? As far as I know, they're not connected. But glutamate is a standard straight chemical, which will be described a bit further on as we go. Did you actually have a chance to look at the video? Because I know you took a clip out and that was really good on the retweet. I did. And I, you know what, to be honest, I, I'm always watching these when I'm uh, really exhausted. and I have a hard time recalling every bit from it. OK, that's fine. But at the moment, uh, is the information you're not too exhausted. Are you picking up bits and pieces which are very interesting? Oh, yes. But if there's like a, a test tomorrow, I might not remember it all. I will be knocking on your door oh, no. or issuing one via tweets. <laughs> I have to say, thank you very much for turning up for so many times and also having issues with your headphones. Not having issues with your headphones, but sorting them out and persevering. Anyway, that's language for you. Oni. Okay. Uh, you said something about uh, uh, something that's happening in the brain, whereby like uh, uh, there's uh, billions of neurons and which are billions of cells. And then each time there's a chemical that is produced, uh, and then in a time of stress and in a time of death. So I don't know if this is a fiction or not. Uh, I think you'll know best about this uh, subject. Is it something 
uh, that has to do with uh, this guy that I wanted to to tell you about is Frankenstein. I don't know, like uh, you you are familiar with Frankenstein, uh, the the master of uh, the brain, how it works. I'm familiar of the actual book. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can go on. Okay. So when he's describing about the fact glutamate is a major neurotransmitter chemical and most mammalian brains have this what its function is it helps memory and a lot of things that are focused within the actual temporal lobe and one thing that about glutamate is when you have this stressful event and it floods the brain it causes a condition called excitotoxicity now that's a great word as well which actually kills brain cells so when you're having this great time of stress other drugs in your brain are released to try and combat the actual quantity of glutamate to preserve those brain cells. So when you actually have this shock, for example, if you're having a car crash or an accident, you might actually think that time is slowing down. And this is due to the effects of the glutamate. For example, if you're having an event where you suddenly have flashes in your mind of how to survive something, you may think time is running normally, but on the outside of your head, it could be fractions of seconds and people will go to you, well, how did you try and do that to survive or what made you think of that again we've had people within the room who've had accidents and they've actually suffered the kind of effect of uh, time slowing down from when we're having the conversation about ndes there are people in the room that have had that and can say that i see the humanity hoax has his hand up and you may say okay mike's on um so yeah i i can i can say i've experienced that whoops sorry breast hand up twice at first hand so i was in a fairly major train accident in my youth and um i experienced all that and um yes yeah, so first hand it's it's a very strange experience your brain starts to process everything slows down but your brain particularly your eyesight st- starts to process uh, things very differently your brain st- it removes color out of your eyesight because color requires more I don't know, bandwidth to project, so everything goes into black and white so the because you're processing less data it's, it, you see things more so despite the fact that the, the, the train i was in the it was glass i saw i sort of saw glass shatter but shatter in a way where i could i saw the shatter as opposed to it being full speed um I saw it crack and I was able to react and, and manoeuvre. And a couple of people in the carriage with me experienced the same thing. Everything slows down, but your brain just sort of starts disregarding certain senses and certain functions. Like, I can't remember any smells, anything like that. Your brain just shuts certain things off and starts to process it, puts all the bandwidth into the things you need most. So um, I've, 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 I've been in a not unique position, but a fairly rare position, having experienced that very first time. I hadn't heard that term for it, but... Um, I, know exactly, I know exactly what you're talking about. Excellent. Now, I can actually say to you, and I've told people in this room before, I've had accidents where at the point of it happening, I get flashes of almost alternate realities of what possibilities could happen. So I'd have five different things that would happen and could cause more damage or less damage. And it flashes through so quickly, there's no actual sound. In these ones, I've actually had color. But then I've picked the thing and done the actions and made sure I didn't die or have a worst case scenario. And it is a strange kind of thing because you feel in the way that it happened to me, I didn't feel time slowing down. I just knew what was going on. It was almost like you were being shown tarot cards with pictures of your probabilities on. And it's peculiar. We've also had Ricardo in who's before who had a massive car accident and had the spins and had the very slowing down of time and felt that himself, which was just really nice for him to talk about and help the rest of the room with that kind of topic. Now, okay. So also, again, at the times of death, you also get a massive flood of glutamate. And at 14 minutes and nine seconds, it's always worthwhile to have little target points if you're going back to listen to this that you find he's talking about tiny structures which are inside neurons, which are called microtubules. And the best way to kind of think about those is that uh, you have billions of these packed in tightly into a neuron, which is very small. And if you imagine straws that you're looking, imagine a pack of straws and you're looking down on the top of them, they're all kind of like cylinders packed together. And what happens there is that you would then find that if you've got so many billions of actual neurons you've actually got trillions of good old microtubules and they're a praying praying 
I've just read two words together. They're a protein structure. That's what I was looking for. Where it goes on is that when Roger Penrose, who was actually investigating with Dr. Stuart Hammeroff, who is a anesthesiologist of the University of Arizona, they were fascinated with how anesthetic was working on people. And the big thing they always know is these doctors that work with anesthetics is they know how to knock you out, but they know how to bring you back. But at that point in between, they can't tell you where you've gone. And I'm sure if any of you have had operations, you might have come out thinking slightly differently or having strange kind of sensations. Greybeard says so, which is good. And I've had one of those where when I woke up in the intensive care unit after having surgery, the nurse was talking back to me as if I had actually phrased a very sensible question. But the part of me that was me woke up in there and went, hang on a minute, she's responding in this. What did I say? Let's not look like an idiot and try and figure it out. But this is all like like nanoseconds of trying to figure it out. But I passed out again because obviously the drugs that were still in my system. That's kind of one of the things that made me want to go diving down this rabbit hole of finding out about consciousness and things. Anyway, where we go from there is that uh, they have consciousness completely disappear- disappears. But when they were trying to find out the two different beliefs, they started to realize that the microtubules could actually be the key to where consciousness was coming from. Um, Professor Roger Penrose, who happens to believe that um, when he was using mathematics with it, which is he was a raster mathematics of the University of Cambridge, and also you'll probably know that he's a theoretical physicist, they both had kind of arguments of looking at it, not together, but just mathematical arguments of what was happening in the microtubules as the brain was thinking. Because microtubules possess the ability to produce light, and that's referred to as biophotons. And if you imagine these straws both emitting pulses of light at the same time, those light waves will interfere with each other. And if you've ever seen two ripples, well, imagine you've got a pond, you throw two stones in either side, those ripples will come across, bounce into each other and make new ripples. And what they were going there is they were thinking that it was causing a fraction of holography in a manner because, as you know, light is electromagnetic radiation. And if you imagine today's working in quantum computers, they're using light to actually speed up the processing of these things. And it's kind of based in that area of work. So what we go on to there is he's talking about at 18 minutes 29, the space is basically not a vacuum. It's the complete opposite. And he uses the phrase that it's a plenum. And a plenum, which is P-L-E-N-U-M, basically means every part of space is filled of some kind of matter. He then describes that a Professor Bernard Haish, which is H-A-I-S-C-H, who is an astrophysicist, he's American, he got a grant from the United States of America to actually research zero-point energy as a source of energy for the country. And when you look at it, I think some people in here might be familiar with the term zero-point energy field. And if we use the 100% symbol just to see if there's people in here, okay, Greybeard, Tamara, and also oh, down there in the bottom, I can't see, it looks like a pumpkin, but I can't see the orange bit. And the human hoax, that's good. We're doing well. So that's good. I'm going over roughly what it is. So what you can imagine it is an energy field that contains information, but it contains every piece of information. So we're going back to what Renegade was talking about, the Akashic Record, and where information was coming from. And Irvin Laszlo, when he was writing a book with Anthony Peake called The Immortal Mind, goes over this and goes into detail. And at 19 minutes 15 in the documentary, they're saying all this information is basically kind of digitized within the zero-point field. And he calls it the Akashic Record, where the past, future, emotions, thoughts, and everything else that you could imagine is kept forever. So you could look at it like a computer program. I see the request. Uh I have no idea how to... Rico. Okay. Good evening, Rico. Um, You could imagine it like a computer program and have it as a metaphor that reality is 
kept on, say, like a CD-ROM or other kind of media that we're using nowadays, but it runs in a loop. And in this way, he's talking that the microtubules, as you're inside the actual brain generating those lights, could be pulling up energy from within inside another universe and bringing it up through the microtubules that produce the light, giving you information in the brain, which is holographic in a manner, which then presents you with the outside world of what you see. But then again, as we all know, our visual capabilities of interpreting electrons isn't always the same. We can't see bandwidths in infrared. And if you close one eye, you might have different number of cones or rods and you'll see different colors. And it goes a bit peculiar because everything that you're perceiving being generated in the gray mass inside your head in a dark space without any light. And that just starts to being messing with your mind at this point. Now, what it also goes into is that you're basically creating an illusion outside of yourself. And again, this can connect in with your out-of-body experiences and near-death experiences. At 20 minutes and seven seconds, Anthony Peake decides to lay out how he thinks this process works using science. At the point of death, something strange happens in the brain. He wants to use an analogy of a skydiver. So he's jumped out the plane. He's forgot his good old parachute, coming very close to the ground. Obviously, he's got a bit of fear going through him and a little bit of stress. I think we'd all agree at this point. So glutamate floods through his brain and produces the chemical DMT, which is dimethyltryptamine. And if no one knows about that, it's the most hallucinogenic drug known to man, generated by your own body. Normally, enzymes in your liver cancel out the DMT, but if you've got enough of it overpowering the ratio that's going into your body, you'll start experiencing bright colors, breakthrough experiences, and also, have I missed anything? I think that's about it, really, with DMT. Again, it's non-addictive, which is quite amazing. It's a molecule that you can't get addicted to. It's the same with psilocybin, the molecule for magic mushrooms, for example, based off the same molecule. Again, you can't get addicted to that. And again, LSD, which is, again, slight variation of the other two molecules, but in the same vein. And again, can't get addicted to that. Dun, dun, dun. So then where we go into it is when it floods through the brain and into the blood system, it basically overtakes you. And when he's telling you to go off and research this, in no, 2009, he's talking about the research of TARS, which is T A. RS, which is receptors in the brain. And once it's released, for the skydiver, time starts to slow down, and a split second could be hours, years, or a lifetime. So on top of that, if you're going to start getting your panoramic life experience while you're having this completely stressful event, and you're only getting it from your birth, and we say this present birth, so if he was 35 at the time, he's starting at zero and getting all that information. It's bringing up memories which could be coming up from the zero point field. And he's experiencing all that. And from his point of view, he's never going to actually hit the ground because he's experiencing his life again and again and again. But from the outside, you're going to actually see him hit the ground, which is not going to be good for him. But in his environment, he's actually surviving. And when it's in this 3D recreation of his life, Again, you could actually talk it back and say it's a simulation. Take it to the fact that in his version, when he finishes his life, he could be split into two in a way in the mind. And Anthony Peake likes to refer to the first person that's gone through this experience as the Eidolon, which is spelled E-I-D-O-L-O-N. And you can imagine this as the idealized person or thing or the aspect or a phantom. But how Anthony Peake is using it, which is good, is as a creature living their lives in a linear fa uh, fashion from birth to his death in linear time. And that's drawing up the information from the zero point field. Now, the second part, which gets created, he says is the daemon, which is spelled D-A-E-M-O-N, which is going back to ancient Greek and talking about a belief or a divinity or supernatural being of a nature between God's and humans. Anthony Peake is using the daemon as the universal self of past lives that can actually help the next version of the pulling of his recreation of his life within his 3D simulation. Now, the best way to think about this is people in this room have probably experienced voices in their head 
that have warned them of doing things or had gut feelings to stop them having accidents or to just be out of bad situations. Ah, oh, good. The human humanity hoax and also centered awareness. And also I saw another one flick through there, which I didn't catch because I was halfway looking at a page. Ah, oh, Renegade as well. So we can all kind of relate to that. Do you mind repeating that, that you, Greek you get word? This... Sorry. Do you mind repeating that Greek word? Yep. Because I've never heard of it before. Haven't you? Oh, it's, he has actually got a book called The Daemon. So it's D-A-E-M-O-N. Does it say what, what it means so in Greek? Yes. It's the belief of a divinity or supernatural being of nature between gods and humans. Okay. I'll look it up and I'll see how it's pronounced because I've never heard of that before. So okay. what you will also see is in the book, he's describing that previously in Greek times that they would hear voices in their own head, which would be their guiding kind of muse, but they would actually assign that as the word daemon as well. Not to be confused with demon, the humanity hoax. Step forward. Um, you're right, absolutely right. And it shouldn't be confused with demon in its modern, se- in modern sense, but the Greek pronunciation is actually demon. But I do the same as you and pronounce it daemon because they are very distinct definitions. But you'll hit. We get into trouble. We do, and it's one of those pronunciations you just say it differently because people know when you say demon, everyone knows you mean the Greek word demon. But they are very, very distinct, very distinct words. Yeah, because when when you look up d a d a e m o n, was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it shows you pictures of um, the devil and things like that. But I just want to see how you pronounce it in Greek. It's, it's pronounced demon. There's um, a Greek word which I should know better, eudaimon, which I should probably better translate because that was part of my degree as well. Um, but they're very, very distinct. Demons now become a, an anglicised version of the, the devil. And a lot of that's got to do with the sort of the biblical um, taking over the word and bringing it in and just making out the devil is just this red horn, uh, red skinned horn. It's, they're not the same thing. It's, it's become almost a little bit pop culture is that the, the yeah, devil is like that? It, a bit like the, yeah. um, oh, what was it? The who, who were they? Tenacious D Devil from the band, from the um, their song. If you've seen the Tenacious song, where it's the Jack, Jack Black, Black. Yeah. it's 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 everything that that video isn't. <laughs> it's just, you just watch that video. It's the opposite. It's the opposite of that. They're very di- very distinct, but the, the pronunciation is the same. But I did the same as, as you, Paul. I pronounce it differently on purpose to make the point of it's not. The D E M O N version. Okay, so in Greek it's pronounced Demon. Demon. Demonas. And we don't call him that. that. That's why I've never heard of it before because we don't call him this word. We call it another word. But yeah, in but Greek. But it's nothing to do with him. It's nothing to do with Sorry. that. Sorry. Yeah. It's not. I was just, I've never heard this word before and I was interested. Okay, go ahead as you were. <laughs> Good evening, Rico, for the first time. If you want to come up and introduce yourself or just go straight with information, that's fine. Um, yeah. Um, hey, guys, this conversation is phenomenal. Um, I am uh, in Paris. I'm an American, but I haven't lived there forever. So, um, But uh, anyways, I just um, I had a question um, about the first word you had said before you said Damon, um, how you spelled it and what it, what it was. It was like Ema, Amen or something like that. Pen and paper, really? Yeah. Here we go. Edelon. So it's E I D O L O N. And the definition, are you ready? Yep. Idolized person or thing slash aspect or phantom. That's the kind of definition. But the way that Anthony Peak is using it is a creature living their linear life from birth to death in linear time. He's just using it to separate the two definitions before he goes into a greater explanation. Oni, did you want to say something? Okay, sorry, ah, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. Sure. My, mic, my mic does turn on. Sorry. Oh, don't worry about it. We've got Jeffrey. Jeffrey's great. He is yeah, my wish. favorite fan for having a mic yeah. on and off all the time. But you would, and you he always butts about when the I say devil, things. Because demon, devil, devils, demons, it's always close to each other, you know? The devil and the demons. Yeah, but it's not. It definitely Jeffrey, we're is. not doing that here. <laughs> okay. Let Jeffrey speak. Right. Um, I think... Uh... He was speaking. He can't, He went to mute. <laughs> okay, I think Renegade... If you go or... to mute, I'm allowed to talk. It was great beard first, and then it's Renegade, then only. Okay. Uh, maybe it's easier that I uh, retweet this link for the demon. Sorry. Who was going first? Uh... <clears throat> 
Oh, Renegade I says saying, something. I missed it. I was saying uh, I can uh, retweet a link to a PDF file of this demon, if you want. Daemon. Yeah. Daemon. 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 Otherwise, if people listen to this next time round on the mm-hmm. audio file, we'll all be hung, drawn, and quartered for doing all the wrong things. Then it'll right. Be okay. Anthony, Anthony Hopkins with his demon. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Lots of hands going up. Grey Beard, I think, had first and then went down again. Did that yeah. have centered awareness? Then it's the human. Yeah, it's Grey Beard. I'm oh, sorry. I just wanted to share if anyone wanted a good, uh, almost analogy of Damon. Um, there's a book series from the 90s by, I believe, Philip Pullman called the, uh, His Dark Material or His Dark Materials. Um, I don't know if anyone's read it. I think it's for young teens or youth books. I've read that. Very good book series. Excellent book series. Excellent. Um, but if, if you read it, uh, he t- they use the word demon. Um, and, it, and it just almost as if we're talking about it now. You know, the, the children um, have animals that are part of them. It's part of their spirit, part of their soul. It, but it's another whole other person, whole other personality. It's usually the opposite sex. But it creates a nice positive, I guess, view and description of what the Greek demon was opposed to then now the more modern westernized Christian demon. It's the kind of muse as well, in a way of inspiring the other person, whether it's good or bad, whatever. Did we say the humanity hoax was next, followed by Oni? Oni was next and then humanity hoax. Oh, hang on. Okay, Oni, sorry about that. Sorry, Jamie, what? were you next? No, no, I was, gonna, I was just about to say Oni was before me. Okay. Okay, Oni. I apologise. My eyeballs aren't all connected at the moment. Hello? Jeffrey, you yeah, weren't no, next. Okay. You didn't have yeah, your I hand up. You no, never had your hand I up, Jeffrey. Never had my hand up. No, but I was saying um, um, the devil only is was a next. fallen angel. You're taking only. He, he used to be an angel, Jeffrey. Yeah. Jeffrey, yeah. yes, he used to be the fallen bringer of light, angel, Venus you know? in this. Yeah. High aspirations. Jeffrey, high... put the mute on. Allow only to have a conversation. Going... Put your hand up. <laughs> be nice. Follow the rules of the room. Yeah. Yeah, the rules of the room. No, but I'm sorry. I'm back here laughing my head off. I'm I'm being ostracized right here. Uh, I'll give you two bites of the cherry, no, Jeffrey. No, if you don't no, buy no, the rules, right. I'm the butterfly. No problem. I still uh, I I didn't I don't even have the problem with that. I'm a very patient person. Uh, if anyone goes like here, I know we are here to learn, and to learn from each other. You know, myself, I'm in South Africa now. And, uh, you know, I'm open for anything. Uh, you said something about when somebody's skydiving that the time uh, runs slowly. And I found it very fascinating, the same thing when you say, like, uh, when somebody had an accident, time runs slowly as well. And uh, I see, like, it's a kind of a pattern somehow. And then you said something again, you said when they hit the ground. Okay, who Sorry, hit the mute button for everyone? Me. Sorry. Um, bad co-host. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Bad day. I give you the opportunity to come out and break your training wheels, and you break them twice already this evening. Yeah, and then you said something that they, when they hit the, the, the ground, are they actually hit the ground or they still remain in their own reality, uh, uh, like in their... Uh, a mental reality. I don't know, like, uh, that's where, like, uh, I find it, like, somehow. <laughs> I didn't get it clearly. Yes. The best way to imagine this is, you know when you've got radioactivity and an isotope and it's got a half-life? So the half-life happens to be five seconds. So half of that would be two and a half seconds. What you would find is that every time you split that by half, you'll never get to zero. Yeah. Are you following me, Oni? And everybody? It's all gone dark over here. Oh, good. Tomorrow. We got people that are understanding at the moment, because otherwise I'm going to take it a little bit further. But hopefully it's a simple explanation about half-life. Yeah, good. People are seeing it. So what happens is you'll never get to zero for yourself. And then you're repeating the life and all the kind of options within like a video game, which I'll get onto next and explain that. But on the outside, people will see you die in that instant because there is an expression and a thought experiment called the quantum suicide experiment and what happens is a scientist or somebody sits in a chair in front of them as a tripod happens to be say a revolver 
that revolver is attached to a particle. If it spins a different way, it pulls the trigger. And of course, there's six bullets in this particular revolver. And if it spins the other way, it doesn't pull the trigger. The guy sitting in the chair just keeps hitting click, 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 click. And he never dies. And he thinks there's something wrong with the gun and everything else. But then he realizes that because there are so many universes with him in it, he hasn't actually died. But in all those other ones, every time that gun clicked, the other person was actually shot because you never actually die in your own experience, if that's a good enough example. I got it. Yeah, go on. Excellent. Rico? Uh, do you mind me calling you Rico, by the way? Because no, I can't no, catch the rest perfect. of the It's icon. not going to matter, but it's fine. Um, it's just a pseudonym. But um, I just wanted to say on that, because um, I know um, if you've ever drowned or like um, gone unconscious, you kind of go through this euphoric moment before. And I only say that because of, um, well, this is weird, but like my sister used to like hold her breath right until she passed out. And she says right before you pass out, you get this feeling. And I, this was, we were children, like, but I, I just wanted to agree with you on that. That's all. Excellent. I don't know. Did you come to last week's one talking about NDEs? No, this is my first time. This is, I mean, this is incredible. I, this is really valuable information. I just, I, I, I am new to Clubhouse and um, I have been talking about the, it's not Clubhouse, Spaces. I, I have, yeah. No, that's good. And, but I do have, <laughs> sorry, Spaces. And, um, but I do do rooms that are kind of tap into some of the stuff and, um, like zero point energy and um, like Atlas shrugged and all of these energies that are like he- around us all the time and like gray matter and like particles that are tapping into. But I just, I guess I wanted to say like a- attention is actually like, cause when you like give your kind of something attention, cause you're talking about if he hits the ground, does he feel it in his, wouldn't his be a hole? Like when you pass out, like, um, you're tapping into another consciousness in a sense. So that Akashic record, I uh, call it the Akashic field. Um, but yeah, this is crazy. But I just wanted to say thank you, but that's all. Oh, no problem. If you like the kind of topic of conversation, obviously follow us. We do have one actual file, which is slightly a bit dodgy, but it's got two hours worth of NDE sharing, which people have done that. And I think I mentioned at the beginning, but I might not have mentioned to you when you joined the room. We are recording this. So if there's anything that you say, I would monitor yourself if you don't want to say anything personal or share which is the other thing um right okay we've got sarah jane back in who happens to be edgeways as well as obviously humanity hoax so nice to see you back on your own identity right here we go ah david we got new people and vintage as well jane, you to sounds speak. good if sorry jane wants to speak humanity hoax oh, and then sarah okay Go. Sorry, I was just going to finish up my previous point as I sat, sat and just checked my notes. Um, my previous point about demon and the stolen word. So there was the, the demon, Damon, was a spirit as opposed to a deity being a god. And you, Damon, being good and Kako, Damon, being bad. Um, the, the, the Bible only uses the word demon in that sense. There's obviously lots of other words of spirits and things. Um, only appears in one part of the Bible, which is where... God and the devil, the demon, in that sense, were sort of gambling over Lot's life and back and forth. Um, and it's the only point in the whole Bible where the, the demon, the devil, kills anybody. And there's only 12 deaths. So that despite all the other, we're not going to go down the rest of the rabbit hole in the Bible, but the demon himself, the, the demon that is referred to that gets such a, such a bad rap in the Bible, um, is only responsible for 12 deaths. And they're all in the chapter of the Lot. Um, and that was more the point of just that, that that stolen word became such a tainted word, and yet it only appears in probably about 22, 23 paragraphs of, of the Bible. The other, all the other words are, are different words for um, devilish entities, but demon only appears in that one particular one particular um, problem. And also it didn't appear until the King's Train of Bible mm-hmm. as well. There was no devil yep. before that. But it's interesting, too, how they mention 12 deaths. Like 12 is mentioned so many times in the Bible. 12 this Welcome to your apostles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I think Sarah's next. She is, yes. Hi, no, I, I, can I just jump back in here again and was uh, drawn by the conversations around passing out and altered states at that point. And I was just wondering whether Austin Ospin Spare had been brought up in the conversation so far? Not yet in this one. Uh, we probably will at some other okay. stage, but... <laughs> I just, just wanted to run the whole death kind... posture um, and that technique. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
have I passed you the file for listening to NDEs or not that we had last you week? You have not. I know I passed it to Jane, Jamie. And uh, if you fancy listening, obviously it's not for public release because we haven't got the podcast up and running yet to the way that it should be. But if you just want to kind of feel how... There was one character who came in late on that actual podcast called Humanity Hoax and gave a really good speech. <laughs> and uh, it's worthwhile listening to. <laughs> I'll give that a listen. If you could pass that over to me, that'd be great. Thank you. Right. So we're going to take it a bit further. And if there were any mediums in the room, hang on, who's coughing? But it's Jeffrey. No, it's not Jeffrey. Good Jeffrey. Nice Jeffrey. Oi, Tamara, what are you up to? Did you want to say something? So fool. It's Tamara. She was the one who came off then. I'm giving you a gold star. Sorry, Tamara, I didn't hear it. Don't Jeffrey me all the time. Paul. No, that was Jeffrey. <laughs> Poor Jeffrey. Yeah, don't, Jeffrey, no. don't listen to him. Don't worry. <laughs> Jeffrey isn't oh, the oh, Jeffrey's got a very listen. soft spot in my oh, soul. No. 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 <laughs> if Jeffrey was a rabbit, I'd have him and I'd stroke yeah, him like this. Fuck you. <laughs> because he's a nice boy. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Hey, hey, hey. Language, boy. Clock, Language. He's looking at his watch and he's, he, he's late. So, so that's Jeffrey. Okay, I'm, I'm no, no, Jeffrey's it. just, you're just a great character. No, it's, you, it's not true. By the way, at any point, if you don't like being, having a joke or humor, just tell me. And if I talk too much, tell me to shut up. And I'm quite happy with it. No offense will be taken, by the way. Jamie's next. So I'm going to pull, apologize in advance because you brought it up. And now I'm going to tell one of the worst jokes I ever know. But it's absolutely on point. Why should you always tell jokes to psychics? Because there's no such thing as a happy medium. Oh, for crying out loud. I've got a boot button. It's very here. deep in there. <laughs> very deep. Very much so. Is there a kick button? Just kick him out now. <laughs> yeah, it would be just be a lot, 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 lot safer. So anyway, if you are a medium and you're in the room, you can imagine it's your spirit guide talking to you and telling you what to do. And you can think about the whole of life as, as we said, like a massive computer game with all the different outcomes that are on there. So every decision that you ever made within this life, you would have multiple other lives with more and more decisions that are in there that you could ever have and you could live life to any potential. So, for example, when you're actually coming as that skydiver almost hitting the ground, you don't just live the one life. By the time you get past, say, if he was 35 at the time, as we kind of put, he would then have the opportunity within that simulation of his brain to start running another life, number two. And if there was 9,000 kind of lives, he would be reliving those in his environment. But on the outside world, unfortunately, he's dead. So the best way that he starts to go at 23 minutes and one second for all those people who used to be old-time gamers, if you imagine Lara Croft, are we all familiar with Lara Croft? Okay, that's good. So Lara Croft was a video game, basically was involved in a lot of mazes. And the best way to have this analogy is Lara Croft, first time, you're her, you're running down a maze, turn right. Unfortunately, there's a monster in there, kills you outright. So what happens is you get reset, put back at the beginning of the maze. Now, you've split into two people. The avatar in front of you, who is the Eidolon, doesn't know what happened about the right turn and dying in that room with the monster. But your daemon, which is now behind you, which is you with the control, knows that the next room, you don't go into the right room. You try and do something different. I will pause there and ask Renegade. Well, what you uh, say sounds familiar with uh, dreaming. For example, you start to fly in a dream and you jump off a roof. And just before you hit the ground, you wake up and then, yeah, you start the daily life again and nothing happens. And then the next night you fall into the dream state, start flying again, jumping and falling to the ground again. We will really get onto a good topic about dreams at some stage because that is so deep because I think that you're touching like the Akashic record and picking up information from other points and realities because some of the dreams I have, I don't think I would come up with them at all. Is there anything you'd like to say, Jeffrey? No, it's just uh, you get to play the game, but then you wake up and you end up in your own shoes, you know. Um, there's no respawn in uh, real life. There's no escape from your unconscious. And whereas Lara Croft, she gets she's just a program, you know, running around mazes. But your life is different. 
Well, technically, at the moment, we don't I know. I think until it would we... be a good idea to have a topic. I was going to say, I think it would be a good idea to have a talk about dreams because I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room that have experienced that, um, that they're flying and then just be- and then just as they're falling, just before they hit the ground, they wake up um, suddenly. So I think that would that would be a really good Oh, definitely. I mean, what we've tried to do with the last seven topics was to lay the groundwork for how consciousness was, the feeling with NDE. Previous to that, we were doing plant intelligence just to get people used to the fact that reality isn't what we really know what it is at this present time. So I think we will find something really decent on dreams, get that in there, and then have a good conversation on it. Sarah? Um, actually, for most of my evening, I've been actually putting together a panel for one of our Edgeways talks for next year. Um, I haven't scheduled it yet, so I've literally just approached people. We're talking about dreaming, um, paralysis, and anything about dreaming. We're thinking about putting a panel together, but if we could, uh, maybe we can have a discussion about that, because I've got loads of people who, who would be very happy to talk about people. Uh, very different backgrounds. Uh, I've got some psychologists. Excuse me, Sarah. Can um, I just ask you to pause for one second? Yeah. Now, I don't know, but for me, I wasn't catching everything that Sarah was saying. I just want to check with the rest of the room because, Sarah, I don't want you to waste your breath and then we'll just see what happens. Now, Melissa M., did you hear whether Sarah yeah, was coming across fully? It, it, it seemed like every couple of words was being uh, kind of silenced, yeah. We lost the context, yeah. Same for me as well. Okay, so we'll let Sarah it all ties up. Okay, it might, I might have a um, very uh, patchy signal where I am at the moment, but I'm putting together a dream panel um, at the moment. Um, so, again, we go back to uh, coincidence, as we were talking about a while ago. Um, if anyone would like to be either on that panel or maybe kind of do a joint up thing, a uh, podcast, a talk here about dreams, that would be absolutely amazing to maybe do a, a joint thing. Um, but we can t- take that offline. But other, um, during Edgeway's talks, a lot of the after conversations always kind of gravitate back towards dreaming and dreaming experiences. Um, sleep paralysis the night hag and things like that so it'd be nice to kind of just hash it out and maybe like a panel discussion um or maybe even a podcast um separate to the uh edgeways saturday nights just to kind of really delve into that so it'll be really nice to see what you guys are doing and see if it kind of like goes hand in hand with what we're doing as well i think that we could be up for that there's enough of us in here which have the right context and the people that keep coming back have been sharing private information within the space which they want to freely share which would fit the kind of paneling and also conversations that you're going for which is great and i like the fact that we cross over with other communities and help them and build them up and promote them when we feel that we know that their knowledge is good and uh, they're not nefarious which is good the only nefarious person in this room happens to be m but i'm keeping an eye on her I do apologise for all my faults this evening. You know, I'm still a rookie, so, you know, kindly ask forgiveness. And you shall receive, Um, which is always good. Now, Rico, would you like to say anything? I just want to say two cents. Um, So, um, the, uh, I don't know if anybody, I study um, uh, Ayurvedic medicine, and um, it originated from a guy named Hermes uh, Trismegistus, which is um, in Greek known as Hermes. Uh, oh no, sorry, yeah, Hermes. Um, uh, and it was, he had this message from um, another w- w- world or realm or a dream that he had or somebody was talking to him and it told him to make these these uh, laws um, about the Ayurvedic medicines when they're called the, um, uh, I can't think of it, they're the hermetic principles. And um, so it's pretty much just nature, natural law, and like how not just all these things that like, but he said, you know, when he was talking to one of his, um, his, uh, this is an Egypt, in Egypt, they called him uh, Thoth, and he was, yeah, he was a mixture. Yeah, he was as above, so below. That's the best thing to kind of put to people, isn't it? 
Yeah, and but I you said something earlier about psilocybin and like axions and like our connections of from the, um, the nerves, right? And apparently, this is something I just recently heard. Uh, apparently, psilocybin can actually stimulate nerve growth. Um, and so I this is I didn't know that, but um, I don't know. There's a lot of money going in from like Peter Thiel into some nerve, uh, some psilocybin, and um, like psychedelic medicine. Yeah, in, have you seen Germany. the work with? DMT that is being done because it actually helps with stroke victims and they take away obviously the hallucinogenic part and it gives up to 40% regrowth in the areas of the cortex of the brain and helps with them, which is good. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I just know that where I'm from back in Portland, a lot of people are doing uh, microdosing and that's just how they like put microdose in their coffee, um, psilocybin um, and like Oregon's gone completely. They've gone everything's legal like like portugal i guess well seattle has gone the same way as well which is great for the right things as long as people do it properly in certain setting and not go over the top on it yeah I, and then also so i just wanted to say like he had this from a dream and he had the need to write this stuff down and like these principles were created so i just i feel like this is all coming back to that and like we're tapping i feel like uh, a lot of these conversation platforms be, like i can go into different platforms and just hear conversations and like consciousness is connecting into that akashic field of consciousness um there was um albert einstein when he created that theory of uh, relativity that was already a theory that was being relativized rel talked about in france by a french um mathematician but he didn't publish the paper at the same time so it was just interesting how this is all coming together oh definitely there's so many things to discuss which is great keith and then i think it's renegade i think that was the order um yeah, I was just adding on what um, Rico was saying. Um, Rico, have you read the um, the Kabbalion, the Three Initiates, which is very much to do with um, the um, the principles of um, Hermeticism? That's a good book. It was recommended to us by Natural Born Alchemist in a previous conversation that we had, which was probably number three, wasn't it, Melissa? Um, I think so, yeah. The book's called The Emerald Tablet of Edmis and the Kabbalion. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's Edmis Trismegistus and the Three Initiates. Is that the one yeah. that you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still yet to read it because I'm part of a mystery school myself, you see. And um, part of the mystery school is to um, to learn about hermeticism as well. So Excellent. I should have read it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I should have read it by now. But I just thought it really interesting what Rico was saying. Do you what if you watch Gaia, definitely... There's a channel called um, the Mystery School or Mystery Teachings on Gaia. Have you heard of that one? I've no, I've heard of Gaia. Is is that um? Oh gosh, is that presented by um? Is it presented by a woman, the blonde woman? Is it? Yeah. 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 Oh she, gosh, yeah. 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 So Sorry. she does mystery teachings, and she talks about oh uh, gosh, everything I wish that we learnt at school. Um, she talks about the tarot. She goes into that. She talks about um, the tree of life in the Kabbalah. She, but she really breaks it down really well. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what I'm doing at the moment. Because um, I know who you're on about. I can't remember what her name is now. But I think she's, um, who you're talking about, she's got something called the Modern Mystery School. Yeah. And um, yeah. she has um, places dotted um worldwide um the, the one that i'm doing coming at the moment it's a woman uh by the name of uh brandy joy and she was um she spent time in the oto and uh, that's exactly what we're doing now so um the rider weight tarot um learning about the seth rose um, within the tree of life um going up from uh Malikul to keta and um, engaging in one thing I really do like is um, engaging in high ritual ceremonial magic. I'm sorry, what was that? I think I just dropped out completely there. What was sorry, sorry, that broke up. Um, yeah, so her name is Teresa Bullard, B U L L A R D, and it's Mystery Teachings on Gaia. Yeah, yeah, I've got some of the um, um, clips actually downloaded on my um, on my computer. Um, quick one to interrupt. Sorry to do this to you all, but it's important. The man Ricardo, if you can see him within the space, 
Where is Ricardo's icon? He's somewhere in here. He said he has the books, have information about Melissa, can you see Ricardo? No, he's dropped out. Oh, okay. Ricardo, he says, he says, uh, oh, is Ricardo, you mean the Rico report? No, 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 Uh, Ricardo, he's one of um, our regulars that drops in to these chats. Oh, sorry. Okay. (laughs) So, hang on. Uh, What I can say is... Sorry, we get this right. If you want to follow him or ask him information, his handle is at symbol and then Ricardo, one word, and then C A L V R I O 1. R I O 1, okay. Yeah. So hopefully that's good. Continue. I was just trying to make sure we didn't go too far past the point. No, I'm I'm fine. I think Ren- if Keith doesn't have anything to say, I think Renegade's next. Well, um, just a small bridge back to uh, Rico about the fungi uh, psilocybin. Psilocybin. <laughs> um, there's also another fungi um, who can uh, reconnect to connections in the brain, and that's called lion's. Me- uh, sorry, uh, lion's. What's the English name? Oh shit, lion's mane. You understand it? Lions yeah, Paul Stammer does a good one and talks about it very well, again, for MS and other connections and cancer-related, yes. um, basically not yeah, curing it, but for, uh, keeping it at the state that it's in. Dementia. Dementia as well. People who okay. suffer. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, just a small bridge back to what uh, Rico was saying. Uh, the fungi as a good connection with us as human species. Again, we should go on to fungus as well. We've got so many different uh, good videos that we could put into there and talk about the intelligence of that as well. That's another topic which would keep us going on for ages. Right, I'm going to roll us all back and go through the rest of this. So if you imagine that you've got all those probabilities going on, you can then go to the idea of... Ah, sorry, Rico, have you got your hand up? I, I I really want to cut you off. I just answered really quickly, um, like fungi and like how bacteria is, and like I think there's something happening right now that's not good for humanity. That's about fungus and bacteria. I know that um, recently passed away. Um, um, what's his face? Um, McAfee was working on some antibiotics and stuff. But um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say, like, yeah, because it's all like the sickness kind of comes from the gut, right? And so. I just think that also bacteria, we can tap into this higher consciousness if we tap into that using like ayahuasca or like psilocybin and stuff. So I just, this, I think it's coming full circle with medicine as well. So I, I don't, that's all I was going to say. I think most of us agree with those points within this. And uh, when we've had conversations on psychedelics and we've gone through those areas, which works out well. And again, that's another really good thing. Just on the case when I asked about Groundhog Day, many people seen the film Groundhog Day? Either talk, throw icons at me. Okay. So the basis of Groundhog Day is guy goes in America to go and see whether an event will happen where a creature comes out to see if there's going to be shadow and whether the weather's going to be good for the next period of time, but basically ends up in a time loop. But you don't actually know how long he's been in a time loop. But in the time loop, he ends up being able to play the piano when he never did, ice sculpture, many other things. And he's got kind of no concept of how long he's been in there. But when he breaks out of it, he's got all these skill sets, which is peculiar. And the good thing about this is Danny Rubin, who is the author of that particular film, contacted Anthony Peake and said that he's actually done the scientific proven research of collating the data from all the other scientists to prove his film correct. And because he studied at Harvard and also taught at Harvard, he gave to all his colleagues Anthony Peake's first book about um, cheating the ferryman and his Groundhog Day principle, which obviously interlinks with the skydiving example. So where we go from here is the hypothesis has been obviously translated into many languages from Anthony Peake. And while he's trying to explain the, how the feedback works within the actual loop, He goes to talk about how the human brain and consciousness is either inside or outside your brain, something that actually manifests either either inside or outside that calls yourself me or I. 
and that's a problem in neurology. Most of you have probably heard about the hard problem in neurology. I'm going to have to check to see who has seen this or not. I will explain in a very simple way of what it is. And it's gauging people. Okay, so the simple thing of how to understand this is an Australian philosopher called David Chalmers, and that's C-H-A-R-M-E-R-S, is saying, how can we effectively an inanimate, inanimate matter with electrical stimuli going through it create the concepts of a self-referential human being? And this has been a very difficult thing for philosophers to try and figure out. So it goes along another line at 25 minutes 19 in the actual video. And he addresses the audience at this point, which is good, Anthony Peake, saying, here we are, every person in this room has hopes, dreams, memories, anticipation that it is impossible within known science to have. You can take the brain apart piece by piece, but you will not find consciousness. You will find evidence with an MRI scan, but not the physical location or how consciousness is generated by the brain. The hard problem of modern science as how close you can actually come to explaining it, and you can't. And again, I think that has been put simply enough. Or does anybody want me to go through it a little bit differently? Can I just jump in? Um, I'm going to say goodbye because I need to get ready for work. Um, but again, thank you. Great chat. It was great to see everybody, um, you know, all the regulars and all the new people as well. Uh, and hope to see you all again soon. Excellent. Very nice of you to turn up. And also, again, content has been fantastic. The way that you've manipulated the room. Haha. <laughs> I didn't manipulate anything. Hey, it's compliment. <laughs> oh, compliment. I thought you manipulated in a bad way. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Have an My, awesome evening. The whole niceness of this realm, and I'm trying to make it nice and polite, and you just do. <laughs> Sorry. See you then. All right. Bye. Um, enjoy your evening or afternoon, whatever time of day it is over there. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Melissa. As one co-host goes, I might create another one just as a safety net. Gabe, are you available or Greybeard? To help our research and understanding, leave Perceptions Today's podcast reviews, subscribe to the podcast, along with the other social media accounts and share. Come and join our live events. That way we can get together and have thoughtful discussions along with advancing our understanding of concepts as we go along.